thought this was going to be a short video, but I feel like this is actually going to take some time. Hi guys, welcome and welcome back. Today we are joined by Zaz because she wanted out of her tank, so here we are. Today I'm going to be answering questions that I get kind of over and over again, so I thought I would just kind of compile them all and put them in a video. I try to get to a lot of these questions in the comments, but I have a small gaggle of children and I have quite a few animals that I take care of all day every day, so sometimes some of them get lost. So if I don't write back to you, I'm so sorry. I promise I wasn't ignoring you. I probably just overlooked it. So let's answer answer a lot of those here. The first question, and also it's a comment that I get all the time, is my accent. I am from Alabama. I talked about that very briefly in my personal 27 Facts About Me video. But I am from Alabama. I did live in Maryland for about three years, and I tried super, super hard to kind of get rid of some of my accent because I was a manager at a retail store there and I would get questions and I would use words and they had no idea what I was talking about so if they were looking for shopping carts and I would say the buggies are at the front they would look at me like I was a crazy person or if they wanted to know where the soda machines were and I would say yeah there's coke machines at the front and they would look at me like I was a crazy person and say, I just want a Mountain Dew. So I tried to kind of calm that down a little bit over the years, but I'm back in Alabama now. And now it is back in full force, and I guess you guys can hear that. Probably my second most common question that I get all the time comes from my most popular videos, also my oldest video. That's the one where I very first sat up Zaz's tank, and I also get it on the video where I redid her tank, and that is where do I get her backgrounds? Zaz's backgrounds actually are two by six banners that I printed at Walmart. So you just upload a very, very, very high quality picture and you print it as a two foot by six foot in my case, because that's the measurements of the tank, measuring the inside walls and adding all those numbers together. And that's about the measurement. And I just cut it down and I mod podge it all in. In the second video where I actually redid her tank, I showed in a very sped up form me applying that background in and showing how to put that in. But yeah, there are just two by six banners from walmart.com. So the next one is about your crested gecko not eating. So I get this question a lot. Like it is the number one animal related question that I get. And 99% of the time that person has just gotten a baby crested gecko and they're saying that the animal isn't eating the Pangea or Apache gecko food and they want to know what they can do. And my advice is always basically the same. For the most part, unless your gecko is actually losing weight or or you're not seeing any poop or urates in their tank, then most likely they are eating. When crested geckos or even gargoyle geckos are babies, they eat such a small amount that most of the time you're not even gonna notice if any of the food that you put in there is gone. Now this is most of the time, this is in most cases. If you think that your gecko is sick, please, 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 please take them to the vet. But most of the time they actually are eating. And the way that I found it easiest to see if they're actually eating is when you go to mix their food, put like a very thin layer on the bottom of that bowl. And then you'll actually be able to see if they're eating because they're not gonna eat that whole cap. Like there's no way, even my adult crested gecko only eats maybe a fourth to at very most a half of that cap over two days. So it's not gonna eat that whole cap full and you're kind of just wasting food if you're filling it up that much. And check for poop. If they're not pooping, then they might not actually be eating. But if they are using the bathroom normally, then they're definitely eating. If you have a loose substrate in your tank, so if you're using cocoa fiber or a bioactive substrate or anything like that, then the poop might be getting lost in that substrate. So check for urates, and those are the, the white powder that are sometimes on the leaves or on sticks, or it might be like a white clump. Just check for that, and if that's there, then there's probably poop nearby. Also, if your lizard is handleable and it likes being out, a lot of times baby crested geckos will actually go poop in your hand if they haven't gone yet just because they are at room temperature and your hands are warm. So it'll heat up their bellies and it'll make them use the bathroom. So sometimes that's a way you can check. Also, I feel like this answer is very long. <laughs> also, if you are feeding them Rapashi or Pangea, try the opposite brand. A lot of times crested geckos prefer 
prefer one brand over the other. So my Crested Gecko and my Gargoyle Gecko will only eat the Pangea food in the red envelope. For the most part, they won't eat any of the other flavors of Pangea and they flat out refuse Rapashi. When I got my Crested Gecko Dexter, he refused to eat for like two weeks straight. And as soon as I got that Pangea, he immediately started eating. Sometimes they just don't like it. But if they're not losing weight and they're not acting weird and they're babies, then they probably are eating. Also, quick side note, if you just got them, they probably won't eat for a week because they're stressed out. Again, if you see anything weird, please take your animal to the vet. Don't let this stand in for vet advice. Next question is about springtails. In all my bioactive setups, I always get people wondering about springtails. What are they? Are they necessary? So springtails are little bitty bugs, I guess, and they're basically a cleanup crew along with isopods that will clean up your bioactive tank. So a lot of people want to know if they're necessary. If you have a bioactive tank, that means a drainage layer and a substrate and plants and lighting and all that, then yes, you need to have a cleanup crew because they're actually going to be what's going to clean up your tank. As you know, a bioactive setup means that you're not cleaning out your tank. It's kind of cleaning out itself. So if you don't have something in there to clean the tank, it's just going to start overgrowing in mold and there's going to be a lot of animal waste and all that on the bottom of your tank and you don't want that. So the cleanup crew eats the mold that may grow, it turns those wastes into nutrients for the plants, and it just kind of keeps the whole system in the tank going. So if you have a bioactive tank, then yes, you do need a cleanup crew. And on to that same topic of the bioactive tanks, I get a lot of questions about Percy's humidity. At one time, I did have her tank completely bioactive. Now I just have a little spot that's bioactive, but people wanted to know what her humidity levels were. And I think it's because people assume that because it's a loose substrate that it's like a crested gecko tank. But the loose substrate that I use in Percy's tank is actually made for desert creatures. So it's actually made to stay dry on top, but kind of keep enough moisture in the middle to grow the desert plants, if that makes sense. Which, what I use right now is Terra Sahara by the Bio Dude. Super cool. Love that substrate. But yeah, her tank stays at about 42-43% humidity. So as long as you're using a loose substrate that's made for desert creatures, you shouldn't have a problem with humidity. When am I going to make a cage cleaning video? A lot of people want to see how I clean out cages, which is understandable because I love watching reptile videos like that too. And I promise I'm getting around to it. I started doing vlogs which I'm going to try to do on Wednesdays. It might not be every single Wednesday to start out with because I'm trying to just get into the groove of doing that but most likely if you want to see cage cleaning videos it'll be in the vlogs. I'm going to try eventually to do just an entire video of me cleaning all the tanks but that takes a long time and usually when I clean the tanks I don't clean them all in one day. People want to see in-depth me cleaning those tanks out so probably the vlogs that's probably where you're gonna see that the fastest the number one question that i get on instagram is bearded dragons and ball pythons and animals having shedding problems i made a video called humidity tips five humidity tips. I don't remember what it was called. I'm the worst. But in that video, I kind of go over ways to increase the humidity in your tank if your animal is having shedding problems. That is going to be a very in-depth video as opposed to what I'm going to say now. So if you are having a lot of shedding issues, please, please, please go watch that video and it'll help you. But for example, with ball pythons, if your snake is having trouble shedding, increase that humidity. Mist down the tank every single day as soon as you notice that your ball python is about to shed. Put a damp towel over the tank or tin foil. Put sphagnum moss in the tank all that is going to increase the humidity and help your snake shed i have two ball pythons one of them is sylvanus and she never has a problem shedding we put the sphagnum moss and mist it down and she's always good to go one big piece and then i have sterling who has always been a problematic shedder he requires special attention when he's about to shed he has to be misted the sphagnum moss has to be put in there he has to have a wet towel put over his tank and he has to have a bath on the day of his shed or he does not shed right and actually i just got back yesterday from having to take him to the vet because his eye caps always get stuck no matter how good he sheds his eye caps always get stuck but usually when we soak him for a few days after he shed the next shed they'll come off but this time they didn't if you want to see me take him to the vet yesterday nope wednesday wednesday's vlog had that because this is going up on sunday so wednesday maybe i don't know what day it is it was 
it was that last vlog and the vet did tell me that some ball pythons are just more problematic shedders than other and he is one of those so just know that even if you do everything right you might still have issues with stuck shed and you still are gonna have to deal with that my hair I get so many questions about what I do to my hair to make it I guess clumpy when it's curly I don't know about how I do my hair basically and 60% of my demographic are males and I'm pretty sure a majority of you guys don't care what I do with my hair so for everyone that's curious I'm just gonna leave in the description what I use on that if I were to explain it right now it would literally take 15 minutes and we're not gonna do that so what are the best feeders to feed your bearded dragon I get this question a lot along with why are you feeding your bearded dragon crickets so I wanted to talk about that for a second in my opinion the best feeders for bearded dragons are gonna be dubia roaches because they are low on fat and they're high in protein and they have a much lesser chance of carrying parasites as opposed to crickets those are gonna be wonderful if you can get your hands on dubia roaches then by all means do it for the most part my animals don't really get crickets that much they get them maybe once a week once every other week and they mainly get dubia roaches or Percy gets mealworms because that's what she prefers but if you can't get roaches I know in Florida I think they're illegal I know no one ships to Florida and I'm pretty sure they're illegal I'm gonna check on that but in some places you just can't get dubia and not everyone has a small pet shop near them that gives them access to dubia roaches and not everyone's gonna be able to have them shipped to their house so if you can't get access to roaches and all you can get is crickets then feed your bearded dragon crickets just feed your animals <laughs> what do I use to edit my videos so before I was editing all of my videos on LumaFusion for the iPad which was fine but now I got a MacBook Pro so I'm using Final Cut Pro to do that which was quite a bit of a learning curve but now that I've been using that it's so much faster and so much easier. I get a lot of questions about what kind of thermostat or what kind of lighting I use in my tanks and I will put my grow light for my Crested Geckos tank. I'll link that below and I'll put what kind of thermostat I use for all of my tanks in the description below as well. I actually use three of those cheap Amazon thermostats and I've never had a problem with them. The very first one that I got that I've now had for maybe a year and a half or maybe even two years that one has started if the power goes out or if a breaker flips or whatever it doesn't turn itself back on immediately so I have to unplug it for like 20 seconds and plug it back in and then it works just fine but other than that everything is still working really good and the last one is about refreezing rats this one's interesting to me because out of how long my videos have been up I just started getting this question within the last month. So I actually honestly didn't know for sure what the answer to this question was. I know that I don't do it because it might be a coincidence. But every time I have attempted to feed a ball python a rat and they've refused it and then I have tried to refreeze that rat and re-warm it up the next feeding time, the rat has always come open and it's super super gross I've only done it two or three times and after those times never again like I said it might be a coincidence but I don't do that anymore so once I started getting this question repeatedly I actually looked it up and it is highly advised against that you refreeze rats for the same purposes that you wouldn't defrost hamburger meat and then try to refreeze it and defrost it again later just like a bacteria thing and you want to give that same courtesy to your animals so short answer no do not refreeze rats even if your ball python has refused it and I know there's plenty of people out there that do it all the time same with their food but like I said I just don't do it after those terrifying disgusting experiences that I have had with that so that is no longer something that I partake in and that's about all I have for this week guys these are questions that I get kind of on a regular basis so I just wanted to compile them all into a video hopefully it was helpful if you were just here to watch Zaz chill out on my shirt that's cool too and if you want to see pictures and videos of my animals throughout the week you can head on over to Instagram and follow me there at l.62 
where you can do just that. Thank you so much to TigerPub1993 for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my pictures. You are the bee's knees. And if you like this video, feel free to like this video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. I put out new videos every single Sunday and hopefully soon every single Wednesday. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.